Hi, I'm Kent Lund. Welcome to The Collectors. I'm your host. Uh, Ron Kanapka has invited us back to see more model cars that he collects. You know, some grown-ups do still play with cars. Next on The Collectors. <music> Now we're here with Ron, and we're, I've got a wall of model cars here, and Ron still plays with model cars. Ron, thanks for having us to see. Oh, pleasure to what, meet you. What does this wall mean to you? Um, th this is the wall of mostly 125th scale model cars. They're mostly in plastic. Uh, they have been cars that I've been collecting for the last 20, 25 years or thereabout. What I did was, um, 25 or 30 years ago, whenever I started, I started to get collect these cars every year. So they were done on an annual basis. In 1960, I would pick up a 1960 Chevrolet, and then in 1961, the 61 Chevrolet. Got it. And I okay. did that for every year. And I collected most of these. These are what are, are called, uh, they are pre-painted, pre pre-assembled models. Some people call them promotional models um, for the most part. Are, are these the models that would be given to you at a dealership? You know, these some of these some of the the promotional models are the ones that were available through new car dealerships and painted in authentic colors. Okay. And so what I did was I I created this display case and they have sliding doors on them to keep the dust off. So you can take them out and play in the front yard with them if you want. So to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could do that. And so what I did was I set up a display. I've got several rooms of cabinets like this. And I've got some larger scales up here. Um, along, along the wall, I've got photographs. Uh, I would also collect- Catalog pictures. De dealer, yes, dealer photographs. Uh, because I also collect literature and things like that of related course, to yeah. model cars. Of course. And we have, as we progress down here, we've got more models, mostly in 125th again. According to uh, years and manufacturer, um, the first collection was mostly Cadillacs and then went into Dodge cars and then it bled into um, American Motors products but again they're behind glass. Is there one particular car <clears throat> here that is very very hard to find? Well, or rare? The, if, if, well I, I, I don't know about, about that. They're, they're all kind of on the rare side. Especially because, in this condition. Well these, these are toys. <laughs> What happens to toys? They get they get broken up and and so forth, and um, they end up getting beat up. Like here's a metal car that's been pretty beat up, but it's metal, so it's almost indestructible. It's not going to get very damaged. Whereas if it were a plastic car, it would get destroyed. There's one one special car here that actually was a kit. Uh, it was a charger that I converted into well. Uh, they called it the topless charger because they top, they removed the roof. Completely. And it, yes, completely. And it was a two-passenger vehicle that um, was quite popular back in the uh, 70s. So. And I know you have another area here where it's <coughs> one manufacturer, Chevrolet. Is that correct? Uh, uh, yes. This group over here. Yeah, that's that grouping is a grouping of uh, Chevrolet cars again in 125th scale. There's a grouping of about. 500 Chevrolets alone. In this area right here? In that, that cabinet, which I built specially to display the, the models. You've really got a nice cabinet here. And all yeah. these cabinets are very... Yeah, these, uh, uh, that, cab, that cabinet as well as the cabinet behind me, I, I made myself. Right. Very that nice. cabinet was too tall to even get through the door when I moved in here. I had to cut, cut the unit in the middle to get it in, in the wall. I can see that. So we have another area now. Let's take a look at that room. Well, now we're looking at another section of Ron's collection. It's it's a, a big collection. What's this all about, Ron? Now, um, we're in an area that at one time used to be a closet. Who needs but, a closet uh, anyway? Who Not needs when you clothes got, when you can fill, fill yeah, the when closet you can fill with the models. So for the most part, there's, there's a collection of uh, uh, Corvettes, and I have... Um, other models again there. promotional models mostly and or, promotion okay. hand built okay right. and what is the what is this particular Corvette called it's, it's one Corvette, of my favorites Corvette Stingray in fact there's Bill Mitchell uh, sitting on that very car and I've got 
photographs I brought home of the Stingray. Yeah. And what year was that actually built? And, it, and the car wasn't even built till 63. Well, well, it, it became the 63 Corvette. Right. Right. It, but at first it was a race car. Right. And that was and, what year? 59, 60? Yeah, 59, right in, right in that period. And, right. I, and I have a plaster model that I brought home from work, which is, um, needs to be restored. I've got the parts and pieces, and parts and pieces, but it's, it's not quite assembled yet. But that's, that's going to be my next project okay. to get that completed. So that model will look like that, ultimately. It'll be beautiful. Now, a phenomenon that's happening in the, in the miniature car and the promotional car, uh, kit car collecting, is creating a car that's a junkyard car, like a barn find, but for a model car. And you have a couple of those right here. So I can't take credit for building any of these because these were bought from the internet on eBay. But what they are, are kits that have been assembled and they look like junkyard cars, cars that need to be restored. They're, they're filled with rust and there's missing parts. This car's got a door fun. missing, a, a wheel is missing. Uh, they're a lot of fun. When I first saw this advertised, I said, I, I'm not going to go through the effort of doing this because I could see that it's going to take a ton, a ton of time, but the effect is wonderful. I just absolutely love them. Here's a little coupe I love the from coupe. the 30s. Yeah, look at, 30s look at that. And at one time, it was a, just a regular car, but it, they turned it into a junkyard car. A lot of fun, I think. Uh, oh, those are, those are very great, cool. And that's a new thing. Great? In the collecting, that's a new a new area, new, new phenomenon. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to look at some promotion, uh, promotional cars from dealers and kit companies. Next. So now we're at the next part of the show here, and uh, we're going to look at some real serious uh, AMT and Johan and promotional models. But I wanted to ask you, Ron, something spurred your interest in collecting. Did it happen to be this uh, uh, Edsel? Well, conveniently, you're standing right next to the, the, <laughs> very, the very first model car that I bought. <laughs> it was a kit of a 1958 Edsel. I still have the box. Um, it was done by AMT. And it even, on the box, it even shows the models that they did at that time, which were six. And I just selected to do the, uh, the AMT Edsel because my dad worked at, he worked at Accelo and he was part of the program that did the machinery to bore the cylinders for the Etzel car and he kept talking about the Etzel and so I had these previews and, and looking forward. And he, he was saying it was kind of a secret car too. It, well it was, it was in, in, a, in, a way, in, a, in a way it wasn't because it was publicized so much it wasn't a big right. secret. But anyway he got me excited about the Etzel and uh, when I was going into high school my first year of school, uh, I was in a craft club, and that was going to be my project. So I uh, built that Etzel, and that was my first project. Um, it was again done by AMT, which they also did a built up version, which was the flywheel version. And if anybody ever comes across an Etzel, for the most part, Probably 90% of the Etzels that anybody ever finds will be in this color combination because that was the most common. Now you just showed something on the suspension there. That's the difference between a friction car and a non-friction car. Yes. Is that well, the yeah, terminology? I, I need to maybe explain the difference. When people come across models like this, they think, oh, a promotional model. Well, promotional model really only applied to models that were sold at new car dealerships because okay. at, that, at that point uh, what the, uh, the toy manufacturers did was they duplicated the colors that were available in a full-size car. And so if, if you wanted a, an authentic color combination you would get a promotional model from a dealership. Otherwise you would get, uh, you would go to toy stores or hobby shops and pick up what what they had were little friction motors, so you could scoot the car um, okay. on the floor. All right. Now you have some older cars here that we want to well, talk about. I'd, I'd like to start here. Okay. Uh, this is basically <clears throat> the start of AMT. AMT um, was a local toy manufacturer, and this is actually their first product. They did. They started with the Ford, 1948 Ford, 1947-48 Ford, as a four-door model. And the company was called AMT 
because that stood for aluminum model toys. Now there's, ah. an, there's another company that built a competitive car. It was a 48 Ford two-door. But anyway, I'm going to talk more about AMT. Uh, AMT started, it was a local toy manufacturer. They were located in Troy, Birmingham, and Mount Clemens, so they were local. So this was their first product, 1948 Ford. In 1949, they also were awarded a contract to do the 49 Ford, the four-door, but they selected, <laughs> after their first year, they selected to do it in plastic. <laughs> Even though they're called aluminum model toys, now they're doing a plastic model. Well, okay, so they got the contract to do the Ford, which they did, and to the horror of the, the management at Ford, when they shipped them a couple of dozen models, they, the management looked at this car and they go, well, wait a minute, there's some errors here, there's some omissions, they, they forgot things, uh, we got to correct this. Uh, what they did was they put the door handles on the car that looked like it was a suicide model, you know, with the doors in the middle. Like, that open like, opposite. Like, yeah. yeah, like uh, like what they did in 1961 for the Lincoln Continental. Well, back in 1949, the Mercury and the Lincoln had suicide doors, but not the Ford. So that was a mistake, and they had to relocate that door handle. They didn't put the wind split uh, across the uh, center line on the hood. They omitted the name above the grill. They didn't put a gas cap on it. Did they keep so, the account, I yeah. wonder? Well, <laughs> they were not in good graces at all. all right. <laughs> they made these errors and omissions, but they, I guess they were forgiven because um, they were... Uh, they were uh, They're well they into were, it. They, and they, they kept them for subsequent years. They kept AMT doing models for them for 40-some years. Um, but anyway, so once they made the corrections, they released uh, uh, the... Uh, car with the, the corrections that were made. Also, there was another company that made a version of the 49 Ford, and they did it in a two-door. So they, when they did the 1950 Ford, they made some improvements, and they didn't have any omissions at all. But uh, now I have two models here that represent a 49 and a 50 Plymouth. Again, I said they, they made mistakes and omissions on the 49 Ford, but when it came to the Plymouth, the Plymouth was fine. They got <laughs> they it, okay. They didn't make any mistakes. And for the most part, when I, this array of display of uh, model cars are pretty much all from the local companies of AMT and uh, Johan. Johan was located in um, Detroit, and uh, AMT was, uh, again, um, Mount Clemens, Troy, and uh, I've seen, I've been by the old, the old Troy yeah. building on Maple Road, yeah. So there were a lot of people in this area that worked at these car companies, uh, model car companies, uh, Johan and uh, AMT, uh, but there was, uh, I brought a selection of slightly larger models that were done in plastic. They, this was a station wagon. This company did these larger scale models. They were 120th scale. They did a Plymouth four-door sedan, and they did a station wagon. Um, also, there was another station wagon that was made. Uh, it was a 1953 Chevrolet uh, four-door station wagon. And uh, that's all I have in now, this. Now, for the most part store. here, Ron, these were bought at your neighborhood corner hobby shop or toy store. <clears throat> right. Right. Or a store that carried toys. Yeah, and you know, the world is kind of a changing place. Um, there used to be in my time, you know, when I was a teenager, there were um, plenty of hobby shops and toy stores. They were quite plentiful. You could go to um, uh, a number of different hobby shops or department stores. That's right. And they, they carried all these toys. Uh, and if you wanted a model car, you'd go to a, the toy department. H it, Hudson's had a toy department. Whether it was Hudson's or um, Kresge's or uh, oh, right, uh, right. Uh, Sears or Montgomery Wards or wh whatever department store was around, they had these models in their toy department. Yeah. Uh, now, a lot of the department stores are gone, a lot of the hobby shops are gone, and so it's a changing world and people have lost interest in this kind of right. uh, collecting. New generation, that's for New sure. New generation, right. The world that's is right. changing. Now, um, here is a, I've got a 56, 1956 Plymouth 
sedan that was made by Johan and uh, the, another company that was called Mantrico from Chicago did a version of the 56 Plymouth which was done in metal and it was used a lot for advertising purposes. You can see the top of the car has got an advertising so for a bank or, or banks. They they really appeal to banks. They banks so love these cars. Then they they had the thought that um, well you sell the model car and then maybe you know the husband or the wife will buy the real car. Yeah, or you, so and the were, bank gets a chance to finance it. They're promotional models. These are now, all. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Now here, um, moving along, uh, I did get kits, and one of the first kits I bought. Um, is that of a Lincoln Continental from the l late 40s. So I bought this kit and I assembled it in the way it was intended to be and then I did my own customizing. <laughs> All right. I turned that car, that classic car, into a bit of a hot rod. Oh. <laughs> so it's an early custom car I did. Kind of a butcher job, but anyway, it was, it was fun. Now if you're also asking me what uh, my oldest model is, it would be a Studebaker, and this is the actual box. It's a reproduction box, but it's a box that was passed out when this car was new, and it was displayed at the World's Fair in 1933, 1934. You notice that it was only 25 cents. Now, 25 cents, unbelievable. Now they're, they've kind of jacked up the price a bit. Anyway, so that's a Studebaker, but moving along, uh, some of these chassis uh, from the early AMT were wind up and so you could scoot the car along. These metal chassis that had either a friction motor or a wind up and that's the mechanism okay. for the wind up and that's the mechanism removed because they offered them in two ways. You could get it with the wind up key or So not. that's a static and that, well, that might be a promotional car yeah, to the dealership? If, if, they, if they remove the mechanism for the key wind it would uh, be a promotional version. Okay. Now, when they got to the more advanced uh, models, in the, in, particularly in the 60s, they, had, they got a more detailed chassis All right. with, the, with the friction motor on it. All right. And then moving along, here's another product from Johan. It's a 1955 Plymouth with the friction motor on it. Uh, here's another one that is 55. But, and but and advertising. With advertising done by Van Trico, the metal car. And then in 1954, 54 was the uh, golden anniversary of Ford from 1904 to 1954. It was a golden anniversary. So this was, this was a one of a kind car that I got from the AMT collection when they dispersed the collection. And they were thinking about coming out with a model that was painted in this gold color. I think I have the only one. Uh, back in 1953, interesting car, the, the Ford was the pace car. Oh. So they created a pace car version in 125th scale. So that, that was available. Um, uh, moving along, here are more of the Bantrico cars. But today, if anybody comes across a Bantrico, it's going to be in this kind of shape. It's going to be a little bit beat up and... Uh, uh, maybe met, dented metal. Um, it was played with. It was, it was a toy. Uh, these were toys. Um, so here's some different examples of, uh, here's a Chevrolet with advertising on the top. Uh, here's a Chrysler car that has more paint on it than normal. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> have a lot of wear, whereas this one has a lot of wear. It had been banged up a, ro a lot, and so there's a lot of paint that's missing on it. And, now, just to touch on this as a collector, um, these all have wear on them, they've all been used. And occasionally a collector will come across one that's mint and untouched, and it's more valuable, but mm -hmm. this is more common. Yeah, you're gonna find them in this condition. Now, here's a plastic one from the early 50s, 50, 1951, that survived, this yes. is a survivor. And you can see that it has a slot on the bottom because it was a bank, and it had a little key, you could open up the bank. Put some money in there. Yeah, and it even had um, the paint color on the roof. So this is a survivor. It's, um, now here is a really good example of, oh, I'll, I'll show you the first one. This is a Studebaker, 1950-ish, uh, and um, it's slightly warped because the plastic they used did warp. 
But if you took this car and you put it in the attic or in the basement and put things on top of it, this is what it would end up looking like. It's um, that's custom. Flat, it's uh, unrestorable. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Put it right. that way. But uh, plastic uh, doesn't do well in heat, and if you, especially if you put piles of things on top of it, you crush it. Um, okay, so as a, a kit, here's it's kind of a fun thing I did. I took a 1959 uh, Dodge. This is the flywheel or toy store version. Um, but I got a, this is what it looks like normally. This is what I did. I took a and bought a kit, an unassembled kit, and I assembled it, but I made a slight conversion. What I did was I took the kit model and I cut it along the door line, the rear door line, and I, I attached a 1959 rear end to it, making it a Canadian car because they're are, I have flyers and brochures showing the difference between an American version of a Dodge and the Canadian version. So what I did was, this is basically a one-of-a-kind kit that is, uh, represents the Canadian version of the Dodge. And in real life, many of uh, the manufacturers made a Canadian version. It was a different name. And sometimes the front grille and front 10 inches and back 10 inches were different in Canada than they were in the United States, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. were, so like, for example, this particular car, the 59 Dodge was called the Viscount. So now we talked about the Etzel, and here are uh, some variants in the models. Um, this is the toy, toy store version with the friction, friction motor on it. But this one, same year, 58, has torsion bars. This made it a promotional model that was offered and available only through new car dealerships. Uh, here is a 1955 DeSoto. Now, a strange thing happened with Johan. Um, at first, they were called Ideal in 1955. Um, but there was, uh, 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 there was another company, it was a toy company, that was called Ideal. So there was an infringement of copyright name. And so Johan was sued, and they lost the lawsuit because the, the other company was ahead of them, and okay. they changed the name to Johan. And, what, and the, the way they arrived at the name Johan was this. The owner of Johan was a man named John Hanley. So they took the two first letters from his first name, J-O, they took the next three letters from his last name, H-A-N, and combined the two and came up with Johan. <laughs> All right. That's, that's how that, that name came to be. Now here's a um, Dodge, 55 Dodge, that's in three colors. And um, often they would take and do postcards that matched the color combination that um, was available. Three tones were popular in the mid 50s. Now, now, Ron, we're getting, we're, we're getting close to the end here. I know you wanted oh. to talk about these cars here, or some of these cars. So we got about four minutes to go, so. Okay. Uh, Let's switch over to this car here, which is an MG. Yeah. Now, I own an MGA Coupe. Now, this, there was a company that came out with an MGA Roadster. Now, I don't have a Roadster, I have a Coupe. So I took the Roadster and I stripped it down. I removed the flat windshield, or windscreen as they call it in England, and I fashioned a top that would represent the Coupe. In did you clay. make this on a... Yeah, this is done in clay. This is one of those projects they did at work. Okay. So I fashioned it in clay. Now, you weren't it, punched in when you were doing this, were you? I did this on my own time. <laughs> this is on okay. a Saturday. I would come in and work on my own no, time. No, I'm sure. And then, so I created... I, once I had the clay, I did this... Uh, uh, I had the guys in the shop do a fiberglass part, and we did a test run on that. Wow. And then what I did was I took this and basically married it... Yeah, so you made the body, yourself a coupe. And then, voila, this is a, an exact copy of my MGA coupe. Excellent, excellent. All right, there's a, a couple other, other, other well, of interest some, in here. This is a, of some interest. In 1964, there was a Golden Jubilee uh, of Dodge. Dodge, So right. they did a special car that has an emblem on the roof indicating that it's the anniversary car. When they introduced the Dodge Challenger, 
they did a special edition, very limited. I think they only did about 25, and it was done in chrome. And then I wanted to point out too, um, on these Etzels, this is a friction model, which was a version that was born that you could buy in a toy store or hobby shop. This is another friction, but this one has this detailed chassis, yeah. which means this particular model could only be bought at a new car dealership. Oh, okay. And were they actually sold at the dealership, or, or they were? Given? They were. They were sold. They were sold. Um, okay. Sometimes in the early 50s, it was common practice to give them away to encourage people okay. to buy the car. But uh, later, they were sold at dealerships. That's where I got a number of these. Uh, right. Uh, I, I purchased many of them from new car dealerships or garage sales, estate sales, and things like places like that. And we're glad you did, Ron, because this has been an educational process. Thank you very much. We're really happy that we could come in here and see these, that grown-ups do play with cars. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thanks. So hey, here we are talking to another collector, actually a collector, designer, uh, craftsman, and artist. Uh, if you have a collection you want to talk about, please contact me at bctvthecollectors at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.